Let's dive into the abyss with the extreme plumbers. I'm Carrie Byron. I've spent much of my professional life exploring science and technology. So when Shell said, come on out, check out how deep water energy works, I said, sign me up. I've got an all access pass following Vito, Shell's brand new platform. That is so cool. Finding out how to capture deep water energy in one of the most remote locations on the planet. You're telling me this goes five miles down. I find out how to build an oil platform. And I'll discover the science and engineering behind Vito that makes it so efficient. There's a lot of PhDs going on in there. <laughs> Redefining how Shell captures the oil and gas that powers our lives. But in this episode, I go subsea. In the previous Vito film, I flew out to join the Transocean Deepwater Poseidon, one of the most advanced drill ships on the planet. So this is one of the biggest drill ships in the world. To see for myself what it takes to drill for oil and gas trapped five miles below the surface of the Earth. Right now, we were at 20,000 feet. Now, I'm immersing myself with the subsea teams, the extreme plumbers who install the infrastructure on the seafloor, the wellheads, the control valves, the manifolds, and all the pipes that will carry the oil and gas for Vito. And doing so requires some pretty impressive equipment, like this giant vessel behind me. It's a pipe spooling ship. Yeah, you gotta think big. And unlike a domestic plumbing job, these guys are working with pipe links a mile long. That's right, you heard me. Mile-long steel pipes, and that's just a short length in this business. I'm at the Inglesides Full Base in Texas, home to Deepwater Engineers Subsea 7. They specialize in making monster pipes like these and installing them in the deep. These will form the three flow lines that will carry oil and gas from the seabed up to the Vito platform. But in almost a mile of deep water, making sure the pipework is safe and secure is critical. This is Alfredo, a Shell subsea engineer. Whoa, that is massive. What is that wall thickness? This pipe is 1.75 inches thick. That's gonna be so heavy, I can't believe this. In fact, a one and three quarter inch steel pipe weighs in at 1.3 million pounds per mile. That's twice the weight of the Statue of Liberty. And there's a good reason for that. It has to be super strong. This pipe will be able to handle about 14,000 PSI. That's the pressure that comes out of the reservoir. That's crazy. So the, the one I saw outside, it was white. Is that insulated? That's right, insulation. The reason why we have to insulate is because the, the oil coming out of the ground is gonna be around 265 degrees. So it is very warm. And in order to keep the oil moving, you actually have to keep it at that. If it starts to cool off, it starts to get very gooey, almost like your uh, honey. Ultimately, how long will this pipe be in, in total? So each line will be about four miles long. Four miles of this? Yeah, that's right. Then we're gonna actually reel this pipe. Okay, when you say reel it, you mean this thick pipe is going to be spooled, wound up, took out and then unraveled. That's right. That's just insane. When I see <laughs> the thickness of this pipe, I can't even imagine what it would take to bend and unbend. That is nuts. It is nuts. Miles of heavy steel pipe is joined into four mile lengths, dragged onto that ship, and then spooled up like a garden hose. But more about that later. First, where do we even begin to do something this extreme? This is the pipe shed, where the magic happens. This is Andy. Okay, this is incredible. This operation is huge. I don't think I've ever seen a pipe this big. Well, I would agree with you there. It is a very extreme. So our building is 1,180 feet long. We have 24 workstations in it, and we carry out all our operations indoors to maintain our quality, our efficiency, and our safety, which is the, the ultimate goal, is a safe operation. So how does this process work? 
Generally, our pipes come in in 40 foot lengths. It will come in at the front end where the first welding pass will be put on. Oh, look, it's moving. So it's moving right now, and they're putting another end on. So just one after the other push, another one push. That's correct. This pipe that we weld at the Shell Vito is, is the heaviest pipe we've ever had here, and I think the heaviest pipe in the Gulf of Mexico to date. And it's not just the thickness that makes these flow lines super strong. By the time they travel from one end of the building to the other, every joint will have undergone 14 separate weld passes for maximum strength. And every weld will have been inspected ultrasonically to weed out any defects. Finally, each joint is sealed in a protective waterproof collar. I've welded before. Can I do it? No. <laughs> Nobody usually says no to me, so well, that, that was precise. shocking for me. <laughs> well, one of these welds probably costs around about $12,000 each. No problem. And then about another $12,000 to fix it. OK, so that's $24,000. I'll get my wallet. Right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> After some serious negotiating, I managed to secure a short section of pipe and the appropriate gear for some rookie training. These are very clean. They're, they're, you're not using these very often. These are the uh, guest gloves, aren't they? Yeah, pretty Brand much. New. Yeah. Brand new, thanks. OK, you ready? This is how it works. The automated bug, that's the machine doing all the work, ensures consistency and eliminates human error. As it circles the pipe, a layer of weld is laid down between the two halves. Each rotation adds another layer, building up the weld to ensure it's strong enough to allow the pipe to be safely spooled. Oh my god, that's amazing! That is so cool. I've never robot welded before. That is awesome! Remember, another 14 times. OK, get to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the pipe sections welded together, it's time to pack them up for delivery aboard the Seven Oceans. Alfredo and I have secured a grandstand view. Oh, it's going. There you go, it's moving. It's going. That's right, the reel is moving. <laughs> a lot of man hours working to get to this point. It's incredible. I mean, it's bending. It's actually bending. It's mind blowing. It's like watching a Transformers movie here. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you call this job? Like human hamster? <laughs> Essentially, they're just packing the reel neatly. Otherwise, we could actually damage the pipe as we unspool it. It's hard to wrap your brain around when you see how big the pipe is, how thick the pipe is, how long the pipe is. How do you even figure out how to bend it? So essentially, if you pretend that this is a piece of pipe, we are basically applying a force where we're bending the pipe. So we're applying 50 tons of force right here. Mm -hmm. And if I were to let that go, which is what we're going to do on the ocean, offshore, it's going to go back to its original state. But if you were to overbend it and you actually apply too much force, it's going to be plastically deforming, and you will never get it back. Did you have to do a lot of testing beforehand to figure we out did. We how did. you can bend the pipe, at what angle you can bend the pipe, and what's going to be the just breaking point? That's right. So we actually did a few tests where we welded some joints together, mm -hmm. and then we actually bended them to the same radius for this reel. And then we actually dissected the pipe and did some mechanical tests on the welds to ensure that the weld itself was mechanically good. Man, the amount of engineering and math just to figure out how this is going to work is incredible. It's, it's remarkable. When I tell my kids about this, they don't believe me. Well, good thing we're making a movie. <laughs> so far, I've learned that subsea pipes are very strong and immensely long. Four miles of this? Yeah, that's right. That in the world of extreme plumbing, everything is giant. Yeah, you got to think big. And that with some clever engineering, four miles of pipe can fit on the back of a boat. Now it's time to lay some pipe. We're heading 150 miles offshore to get to where the veto platform will eventually be positioned and connect to the pipes that are about to be put in place. But working at 4,000 feet of water, where it's completely dark and beyond the realms of human divers is no easy task. That's why they need one of these, a submersible remotely operated vehicle. This is 
Kenny, ROV expert. Kenny, the rover's much bigger than I expected. Yeah, it's quite a large guy. So how deep does it go down? Up to a mile, mile and a half. That must mean meters. it's really dark. There's no light down there. No light. Whatsoever. Um, so we illuminate the area so that the guys on the bridge can see where we're going. It basically flies like a, like a small aircraft. Okay. You know, it's got, we've got thruster control, four laterals and four vertical thrusters. How many people man this? There's six guys on shift, three guys, there's two systems, uh, three guys per system. The arms, is this where you pick things up? We call this a Titan T4, a seven function manipulator. So it basically mimics what your arm does. I like robots. Can I, can I try to control it? This one? Yeah. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah? Woo! We'll go upstairs and do it. Let's do it. Yeah. With a potential recruit on board, Kenny wastes no time in setting up a skills test. But first, pre-flight checks. That's the joystick, so that operates your thruster commands. This is Mark, an ROV Top Gun. So you can actually speak to Joe, who is the officer on deck, and you can run through some of these controls with him. Hey, Joe, you want to run me through some controls? Yeah, we can do that. Excellent. Perfect. So if you push ahead on the thrusters and pull back, and if we go to starboard, you're right, and then to port, your left. Perfect. All good down here. Now for my entrance exam. How to use a multifunction arm. Every single joint mimics those in a human arm, apart from the wrist, which can spin around and around. I don't have that function on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as this one. So what I'd like you to do is see if you can pick up some of these wooden blocks we have here. OK. So unfreeze, open this claw. Ooh, this is fun. I think you're a natural. And that's it, you've got a hold. Woo! Look at that. There you go. There you go. I wonder if I could actually get it to this bucket over here. Sure. Go for a drop. Perfect. Woo, there Good we shot. go. Two points. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, well done. Thank you, Joe. No problem. Games aside, subsea engineering is serious business. And with the seven oceans now positioned above the wellheads, it's time for the pros to take over. They're launching the ROV into the water. First task is to connect the pipe to the pre-installed anchor on the seabed. Then pipe lay can begin a painstaking and precise process that even working continuously around the clock will take 10 days to complete. The ROVs act as the eyes for the engineers on the bridge, monitoring the positioning of the pipe. The touchdown point is almost half a mile away, so setting the angle the pipe leaves the ship is crucial. That's adjusted by raising and lowering the rear tower. Too steep and the pipe can buckle as it lays onto the seabed. Too shallow and 300 tons of pipe hanging off the back will make the ship unstable and positioning the pipe accurately impossible. But this is the team from Subsea 7 able to lay the pipe to within 12 inches of a target on the seabed a mile below ready for the arrival of the Veto platform. Join me in the next episode to find out how the Veto team managed to shrink an oil platform. We went back to the drawing board and looked at everything. We said, what is the bare bones? What do we actually need? Whoa! Using the latest technology. This is crazy! To build a platform that redefines the future of deep water energy for Shell. Next time you see this, it'll be 150 miles offshore. If you want to know more about Vito or the future of deep water oil, check out some of my previous films here. Or some of the other great engineering films from Shell here. Don't miss out on future shows. Subscribe to Shell by clicking the logo.